There are two X870 ITX motherboards on the market currently. I reviewed one already and let's talk about uh, this one today. This is Gigabyte's Aorus Pro Ice. Welcome to Machines and More. There still isn't a huge selection of 800 series AMD ITX boards just yet. Now the X870 chipset is as high up the stack as it gets currently. When it released, I took a look at Asus's Strix X870 and the Aorus Ice is the other one. A big thanks to Gigabyte for sending by their X870i for a review. This is one that I have been wanting to review. Uh, full disclosure, they sent by this sample for review. However, I am not compensated by them for this review. With all my reviews, you can expect independent and objective feedback. Uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Gigabyte's Aorus Pro X870i is a mini ITX motherboard for AM5 Ryzen CPUs. Within 800 series chipsets for ITX, you'll be choosing between B850 and X870. Unlike with Intel boards, the B series boards for AMD do allow overclocking, and the main difference is the minimum spec for your expansion slot, which is only Gen 4 by 16 for B850. But for mini ITX boards, currently all B850 equipped boards have that Gen 5 slot. The other difference we could point to is the USB 4 spec, where you do get one 40 gig port in X870, and that is optional for B850. Let's take a look at the Aorus Pro Ice here, and perhaps the most striking impression is this ice white appearance. Now I'll apologize that I did not use this in a white build because I don't have a silver M2, but I think some of you may be looking to do that. Uh, but even if you aren't, and you are concerned about the appearance meshing with your build, if you've got a tower cooler over it or something like that, now that white doesn't actually stick out that much, but you know, you do, do see glimpses of that but it is quite uniform because even the stock cooler mounts are white and that's a neat feature there. The board features a Gen 5 expansion slot and this has a protective shield around it. They call this the ultra durable PCIe armor. This is like shroud here. But the nice thing is there is a latch release here. This latch button here, just press it and that will release your slot and your car will be free to remove. And that is very handy for a mini ITX build where this latch would otherwise be in a difficult to reach location. And this button may still be covered, but at least um, this is easier to, to, to press straight down versus, you know, finding a way to, to go uh, to this latch here. Over here is the M.2 heatsink. The setup with this board is a single Gen 5 drive on the top of the board. And that means the heatsink can be lower than the uh, rear IO side heatsink, and that allows for better cooler compatibility, especially for uh, low profile coolers. This heatsink is toolless, but you have to reach between these two heatsinks and then pull it up. So it's a little bit tight there, but it does come off. And you can pop your drive in without tools as well. The heatsink is independent of the VRM cooling. Uh, the VRM is cooled by its own heatsink and there's a small fan in there. That uh, fan is fully controllable in BIOS and by default, you can only index it to the chipset temperature. Pop this back in first. Okay. And on the back is where the other drive sits. This is a Gen 4 drive back here. And notice on the back, there is no protective back shield for the board. And this is a departure from previous Gigabyte Mini ITX AMD boards because boards like the B550, X570, and B650 ITX boards all had a back shield. So unfortunately, this is a new emission here. For the IO, let's start at the back. You have two USB 2 ports at the top. One of them is designated for BIOS flashback when you are updating your BIOS. And you've got a Q flash button right here. There's four USB 3.2 ports. There's one USB-C 10G and one USB 4, 40G, which works for a display port. Uh, for onboard graphics, it's gonna be this uh, to display. Otherwise it'll be HDMI only. One thing to note is with these USB-C ports, they do sit in a rectangular cutout. I wish they had an oval 
uh, cut out here. So it is possible to inadvertently miss the plug and kind of slot into the side. So do be aware of that. With ASUS's Strix X870i, it does have two 40G USB ports. So that's gonna have one extra 40G port compared to this Gigabyte. At the bottom here, you have 2.5 GE and Wi-Fi 7. This antenna pops in very easily. It's quick release, so you don't have to unscrew anything. And it is uh, also white too, so it's nice. Front of the board, big change here. They got rid of the riser card, which was with used with the B650i, which is a great move. Uh, two DDR5 dims, typical for a mini ITX board. At the bottom right, you have a full suite of front panel connectors. Your two SATA data ports. There's a 3.2 USB header and one 10GC header. And you have uh, front audio with a Realtek ALC 4080 codec. Now the audio solution is something that the Strix X870-i does not have without using that external Hive device. Here, the HD audio plug is in a rather noticeable location. Yeah, these cables usually come out that are quite thick. So you, know, you will see that if you do use that and that will protrude quite a bit, but hey, you know, you do have one here and that's uh, at least, you know, it's present. For fan headers, you do have one four pin CPU fan header at the top left next to the EPS connector. And then there are two additional, I guess you would call these mini headers uh, all at the top. They are convenient to locate. Uh, interestingly, the full size one is mapped to what's called CPU optional in BIOS. And these two are not ideal because they do need an adapter cable, which is kind of an inconvenience, but they do provide two of these. So uh, fortunately, you, know, you do need to use those adapters. And then there are two ARGB ports here with a older style RGB here. So they're all at the top, that's nice. One thing I wish this board had is a clear CMOS button at the back. For this one, it's actually gonna be located at the bottom right corner right here. And for a lot of EDX builds, that'll be difficult to short out uh, in a built up system. So do be aware of that if you experiment with uh, RAM OC or you know CPU OC, you, need, you may need to clear that sometimes. One other thing to note on this board layout is you'll notice the bottom right corner is thicker at the screw hole location and you will need a special longer screw to mount to your case. And Gigabyte provides you two screws. Uh, one is a 632, one is for M3 standoff. So just make sure you use the right one for whatever standoff comes with your case. Power delivery for this board comes courtesy of an eight plus two plus one setup. These are 110 amp smart power stages. The ASUS Strix on paper has a better setup. It's got 1210 amp stages for your CPU V core. So it does have four additional stages, but the reality is either of these boards are enough for any current AM5 CPU. And the benefit of those additional stages will really be borne out more in your more serious overclocking applications. So for typical PBO, you know, curve optimizer type of stuff, this is absolutely fine. To test out the board, I built up with a 9800X 3D in the NK7 II, and I think this will be a very popular CPU choice for this board. And first testing in an all core scenario here for 30 minutes, Cinebench R23, comparing against the Strix X870-I, uh, the clocks were about 20 megahertz higher on the Aorus. Uh, it did also draw down a tiny bit more wattage. It's not a huge difference, but at least for out of the box, the all core performance on the Aorus does seem to be tuned a little bit higher. Uh, for gaming, Cyberpunk 2077 with a 5070, the Strix has slightly higher game clocks, 10 megahertz, roughly similar package power. Another thing I wanted to test was the M.2 cooling on the heatsink. So for the Strix board, the bottom one is the Gen 5. It has a multi-layer stack there. So the cooling is not as ideal here because this um, back four drive is not cooled at all, but this gets the heatsink all to itself. The drive temps on the Gen 5 are much better. Uh, if you do need to use this back slot, I would try to put a heat sink or something on the back drive, especially if you have a less than ideal airflow situation, such as in, you know, a backed up against a sandwich style case divider. For power delivery, the VRM thermals did come in better on the Aorus board for the all core tester. It's not directly comparable uh, because the board cooling fan here is running 
at 7950 RPM. And I actually never saw this fan drop below 6000 RPM or so in regular use. Where the Strix's two mini fans were at 3450 RPM, these temps, you know, either is perfectly fine, of course. However, at the default level, the VRM fan with the Oris is very, very audible, even over the CPU cooling fan, because it always has this high frequency buzz that I could hear over the CPU cooler fan. And I'm actually not particularly sensitive to that type of sound so that I could hear it. It's probably pretty bad. So especially if you are sensitive to the higher frequency noise, I would dial down the fan RPM a little bit. I experimented by reducing it to 3200 RPM. At that point, I couldn't hear that high frequency buzz anymore. And there really was not a meaningful difference in the VRM time. So I think you could go even lower on the VRM fan if you want. And let's just take a quick listen to the sound here. This is 7,800 RPM. It is quite audible at this level. Overall performance on this board is good. And throughout my testing, I did not have any problems or issues, no coil inductor resonance with this board. The BIOS is fine. And it's neat that they have a white theme to go along with the ice board. From my testing, the performance is comparable to the Strix X870-I. So that wouldn't be the differentiating factor uh, versus uh, that board. Uh, the biggest difference is the price because this comes in at $300 US right now. So. It's considerably better price than I think 440 or so for the Strix. And what you do get with that is one additional 40G USB-C port, slightly better board build with a partial back shield and uh, cooling for both M.2 drives, but at the liability of slightly less compatibility with that taller heatsink, right? And you've got a clear CMOS button there and you you know have to get that Hive device that's bundled in. So I think it's easy to recommend gigabytes here because I think most people will be happy with just having 140G port. The Aorus Pro is quite complete because it doesn't use riser cards and you do, you know, unfortunately have to use these dongles for the fan cables, but I think that's okay considering that the B650, I had a riser card and those dongles and they've improved on that a lot here. However, given the price, the Strix B850-I is actually a more apt comparison because your similar real retail price Despite the BA50 versus X870 designation, the real difference there is a 40G C port for the Gigabyte versus a 20G port with the Strix B850. But with the Strix, you do get that clear CMOS button for fan headers and you get two Gen 5 drives. Boards have similar build quality, so this choice could go either way depending on what you prioritize. Of course, here the white color for the Aorus Pro Ice may not fit in perfectly with some builds. Gigabyte also has a BA50 I board, which I haven't reviewed, but I do hope to soon. It does come in at around $40 US less. What you do give up is the high speed 40G port because the fastest port with that board is a 10G port. Otherwise the layout is very similar and it is black. So that may fit in better with a variety of builds. So for some of you, $40 savings for a high speed port you will never need. Uh, that's great for some that $40 would be well worth it. And I personally would lean towards the worth it camp, but I do hope to check that one out soon and give it a full review. To sum this one up, the X870i Aorus Pro Ice is a very good board. It's very ideal for a gaming build or high-end production system. A Gigabyte did have to cut some features like the back shield and it does have a few quirks. But I think versus their previous B650 ITX board, this is hugely more convenient, better thought out, and um, highly recommended. Uh, great for any AM5 build. Definitely think that would make sense to pair this one with a 9800X 3D, 9700X, 9900X uh, type of ITX build. And as long as you can make this ice white color scheme work out for your build, I think you'll be very happy with this one. So I hope you found this review helpful. So please give a like, make sure you are subscribed for more content like this and uh, big thanks for watching today.